This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map for Suppressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Mason County. But before that, this video is brought to you by Donald Smart and David. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Mason County map can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Mason County. This map is loosely based off the West Virginia side of the Ohio River Valley farmlands. I decided on Mason County as it has a lot of farming and industrial areas. The Kanawana River dumps into the Ohio River in this area and it is home of Mothman. Point Pleasant is where he resides. The background story goes after years away, you have made your way back to home. A friend has let you stay in a carport. Really? That's not, that's not much of a friend, he asked me. But hey, it is a place to sleep out of the weather. You spend what little savings you have on some very used equipment, a pickup and a small field beside your friend's place, and a small area down the road. The business across the street from you has allowed you to park your equipment until you get a place of your own. You start with baby animals on all of the animal pens, but you do not own the land there, and they are not sellable. Now that you're back home, it is time to see if you can bring the small community back to life as you remember it. You start with $100,000 in new farmer mode, but depending on what chainsaw you buy, it is possible in start from scratch to start with less money. So I didn't really understand this portion of the description. So I did fire the map up in start from scratch, and I'm going to explain to you the deal with the chainsaws in a little bit when we get to our starting fleet. This map includes 40 fields of different sizes. Most are not worker friendly and they are small from 0.3 to 3.8 hectares in size. This map includes alfalfa, black bean, and peas as new crops. In addition, alfalfa, black bean, peas, and canola is swathable. This map includes baby animals, ducks, goats, bulls, rams, and more. There are soybean straw, corn straw, and soybean is also planted in rows. This map includes several cell points and has several productions. Most are new or redone in a new way. They are custom to the map and all need pallets to work. So we're going to have an extensive look at the production, not only just running down through the production menu, but actually going to each production and hopefully seeing kind of some of the custom outputs because this map has some pretty wild productions some things that i have not seen on any other map to date this map produces just saying anything from flour to milk to junk cars outhouses and if you really really wanted to well you could produce septic stuff that's right waste this map has a lot to offer to the right player and I hope you enjoy it. Then he goes on to thank Bruce, his tester, and sharing various ideas. This map is fully compatible with platinum and premium expansion productions and crops. And then he has a long, long list of folks that he wants to give credit to with respect to using various things for the map. With that, let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to be using the mods. We typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. Now we are loading this map up in new farmer mode, but I will tell you if you start in start from scratch or farm manager, you will find everything exactly how you see it here in new farmer mode. With the exception, you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. And of course, your bank balance is going to reflect those various game modes respectively. Here we are when we load into the map for the very, very first time. We start at our uh, our sleep trigger, our wicker basket, our chair, under the carport, outside, because our friend's sleeping inside in a warm house. Just saying. It'd be nice if we had a spare bedroom in there. But hey, we have a chair. 
Maybe it's motivation to get uh, get your own place. That's what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and start and take a look at the PDA. And at first glance, I'll tell you, at first glance, it looks pretty basic. We've got some fields over here to the east. We've got a big section of forest kind of in the middle and the various areas of the forest around the map. And we have a whole lot of hot spots because this map has 28 productions built in. More on that in a little bit. This map includes all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, with the exception of oil seed radish. In addition, we have alfalfa, black bean, and peas as added new crops, and then the premium expansion, red beet, carrots, and parsnips. Taking a look at our farmland overview, we own field our farmland ID 9, farmland ID 24, which actually extends a fair bit out into the water. And then we had farmland ID 20, which is located right here. Every bit of land is purchasable on the map, including the lake, farmland ID 63. There is a massive stone quarry over here at farmland ID 45. And it's just a couple of interesting highlights. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is gonna show us all of our viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland gonna cost us? As you can see, we have quite the variety in sizes of farmlands. Most of the very large farmlands do not include any fields. And overall, the land prices are fairly affordable given the various sizes of these fields. Take a look at our field calculator screen. This is gonna show us just the specific sizes of each particular field. We can then go and cross-reference this with our farmland lease screen to get an idea of what it's gonna to cost to buy any one particular field. We do have the standard FS22 crop count available to us on the map with then custom growth schedules for alfalfa, black bean, and peas. Taking a look down through our prices screen, we do have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. In fact, we have multiple sell points for our base game crops. So those are animal outputs and eggs, wool, and milk. So those are silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we move down through all the base game productions, once again, we have a continued listing of several areas to sell all of our base game productions. We also have the ability to sell lime. We have the ability to sell our stones, and then we get into our custom fill types. And this is quite the list. We have corn straw, compost, soybean straw, alfalfa, alfalfa hay, black bean, peas, asphalt, coal, dirt, gravel, sand, iron ore, pay dirt, crude oil, kerosene, tar, tires, cement, stone powder, limestone, bark, Asphalt pallets, cement pallets, charcoal, empty pallets, drum barrels, corn oil, seeds, pipe, sawdust, gold. We have then gold bars, pioneer pallets, or pioneer pellets, trash cans, plywood, glue, glue pallets, household goods, junk cars, dry lumber, nails, new tires, rubber, outhouses, firewood, new cars, wheels, then we have a junk dozer, loader, and a junk tank. We have toilet paper, and then we have our platinum expansion production items, which we do have multiple sell points for those. We have our premium expansion production items, which we have multiple sell points for those as well. Separated manure is a go, as well as our red beet, carrots, and parsnips. Taking a look at our vehicle overview. Well, we have some serious, serious maintenance problems. Somehow, somehow some of these things have negative maintenance on them. So I can only fathom how much it's gonna cost to repair those items but all of this stuff is heavily used, lots of operating hours and lots of maintenance costs are gonna be used. You're not gonna get anything to sell this stuff at this rate. 
fact, you're trying to sell the uh, Lizard pickup truck, it looks like it's going to cost you 810 bucks just to get it off your hands until you do something with this maintenance. We do start out with animals at the various animal areas. We have piglets, male and female, at the pigsty sheep barn. We have young goats, young rams, and lambs. We have chickens and ducklings at the chicken coop. And then the cow barn, we have female calves as well as a male calf. We do have contracts available on this map. There are no production chains owned at the start. And this map does have the 100 Elm Creek collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet of massively, massively used equipment. I don't know what we paid for this, but we probably still paid too much. We've got the John Deere 7810 medium tractor. We have the Dudes Flower Top Liner 4090H Harvester that is paired up with the 4090H Grain Header and Header Trailer. We have our 1986 pickup truck. We have the Welger DK115 trailer, as well as the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 Cedar and Power Harrow combination. We have the GMD 3123F front mower, as well as the Boss Alpine 251 forage wagon. We have the Anderson M160 Forestry trailer. We have a Quicken Q7M front loader arms. And for the front loader, we have a Universal Bucket. That is our starting fleet. Now let's go and check out our mods and DLCs because we do have custom vehicles and implements that are a part of this map. We have an edited Komatsu 981XC tree harvester, as well as an edited Komatsu 875 tree harvest, or sorry, log forwarder, not tree forwarder, but log forwarder. We have an edited wheel loader bucket that's going to hold anywhere between 5,000 and 25,000 liters worth of products and it's also going to work with lots of the new custom fill types as well we have a modded variant of the distinction super b edit that's going to hold a crazy crazy up to 200,000 liters worth of fill types and again it has been modified to work with all of the custom new fill types that are on the map we have some modded liquid trailers in the mks8 in rrv mks32 Again, they have been modded to work with various new fill types that are on the map and have 25,000 and 50,000 liter capacities. We have the Joskin Aquatrans trailer. It's also set up for those new liquid fill types. We have a modded Penroth Raptor 300. So as the front loader bucket for 1,000 to 5,000 liters. And then here we have those chainsaws that I kind of alluded to in the intro. These are massively expensive chainsaws that range anywhere from $25,000 to $100,000. The way it reads in the description, let's go back and read the description because it doesn't read very good. It says you start with 100 k in new farmer mode, but depending on what chainsaw you buy, it's possible to start from zero, $25,000, $50,000, or $75,000. This is a start from scratch feature only. Maybe you have to buy multiples of these in order to do this. I'm not sure. Start from scratch, you start with $500,000. So I assume if you bought five $100,000 still chainsaws, then you would have a $0 balance. And then you could buy any combination of these chainsaws to start with any amount of money under $500,000. I didn't really know you could buy multiple chainsaws. Um, I don't know if you can sell a chainsaw after you buy it. Honestly, I've never tried. But I think in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. But basically, yeah, you could pick a $25,000 McCullough, a $50,000 you know, CS2252, a 75,000 Husqvarna, or a $100,000 still chainsaw. We then have an edited T560 plus John Deere harvester. We have a edited RRV Tornado 252 snowblower. We have an edit of the Mac Superliner that is going to set up to haul logs. We have another edited Mac Superliner semi. 
We have a super liner tanker that is set up to haul all of the liquid fill types, as well as a super liner log loader. A neat little edits of that Mack truck. And then we have a little pup trailer, again, set up to haul logs. Those are all other vehicles and implements that are included with the map. Now, this would be the point in the video where we typically would do a farm tour. But you know what? We really don't have a farm. We have a chair. And that's all we have. So here we have our really, really used pickup truck. We do get a pallet of seed. Surprise, the pickup truck can hold that given its age and need of maintenance. And then the rest of our starting fleet is located right across this gravel road. And that is pretty much what we have to go off of. Now, with respect to are the farms customizable? Well, there really isn't a farm, and I really debated on what to score the map with respect to a customizable farm because we don't have really an area on the map that is clearly farm land. Now we do have the ability to buy anything and everything on the map and our animal areas are scattered around on buyable land, but we don't own that land. And to some degree that land isn't necessarily flat and easy to use as viable farmland. So while there isn't really any viable farmland on the map that really stands out, we also don't actually have a farm. So I'm gonna default back to what we do with respect to wilderness style maps, where we don't have a pre-placed farm. And we're gonna give the map a full point there because, well, you can completely customize a farm that doesn't exist. So instead of doing our farm tour at this point, Let's start our overview of our production. As I mentioned, this map has 28 productions built in. We have a BGA, we have Pioneer Palletizing, we have crude oil production, cement and asphalt, we have a smelter, we have a quarry, we have feed production, we can produce charcoal, gold, tar and glue, pepper, not pepper, paper and cardboard, pallets and plywood. We have a trailer park that's gonna make various things. Septic production, we have a wood dryer, tire production, firewood production. We can produce outhouses. We can produce new cars, a bakery, a carpentry shop, cereal factory, and dairy. So, at Pioneer Palletizing, we can take wheat and pallets and make, we make seed. We can take and make asphalt pallets with asphalt and pallets. We can make cement pallets with cement and pallets. Pioneer pellets with sawdust and pallets. Glue, we're gonna take glue. We're also gonna take drum barrels and pallets. Household goods, we're gonna take corn and pallets or peas and pallets or black beans and pallets. Some of these productions are really, really interesting. Sugar, we're gonna take sugar cane and pallets or chopped sugar beet and pallets. Crude oil production, we're gonna take sand, pipe, and water to get crude oil. Then we have our cement factory where we're gonna bring in sand, lime, stone powder, and diesel to get our cement. Or for asphalt, we're going to take sand, tar, gravel, and diesel to get our asphalt. Down at the smelter, well, we're going to get all types of things down at the smelter. We're going to take iron ore, coal, and empty pallets to get metal. We're going to bring gold, coal, plywood, and pallets to get gold bars. We're gonna bring iron ore, coal, and pallets to get pipe. Drums are gonna be produced with iron ore, coal, and pallets. Metal, rolled metal, or you can make it with trash cans, coal, and empty pallets. You can also make drum barrels with trash cans, coal, and empty pallets. You can also make 
drum barrels, although this has a metal roll graphic. In junk cars, coal or empty pallets. Then you have your choice of nails. You have junk cars, coal, empty pallets, and carton rolls, which are going to make nails, or iron ore, coal, empty pallets, and carton rolls to get nails. Then you can make brand new wheels with, and these are rims, you know, fancy rims for cars, iron ore, coals, empty pallets, and stone powder, or junk. Okay, now this is, this is where it gets a little confusing. We're gonna have 1,000 liters of, is it junk cars, or is it junk loaders, junk dozers, or junk tanks? I don't know. All these look the same to me. If they are different, let me know, but I cannot visually tell the difference between any of these junk items. Coal and empty pallets. And then we're going to get out of that, okay, wheels, nails, metal, drum barrels, and pipe out of all that combination. And then we have different types and different amounts in order to get different products there. Quarry production is another kind of a confusing one. We're going to bring in stones, water, and diesel. Stone, water, and diesel. And then we're going to get out of that coal, lime, limestone, dirt, gravel, sand, iron ore, pay dirt, stone powder, and junk loader. Feed production. Well, pretty straightforward. We have grass. It's going to make silage and compost. Silage alfalfa, we're going to bring alfalfa, make silage and compost. Cow feed, we're going to do grass, soybeans, and sunflowers to get TMR and compost. Pig food, well, we're going to corn, barley, soybeans, and potatoes to get pig food and compost. And mineral feed is going to be corn, oats, sunflower, oh, sunflower soybeans, sorry, and potatoes to get mineral feed. Charcoal production. Look where we are here on the slider. We're not even halfway. Charcoal production. We're going to do basically charcoal, bark, empty pallets, and carton rolls to get charcoal. Gold is going to be water, pay dirt, and coal to get gold. Tar and glue production. Well, we're going to bring tires and kerosene to get tar. Glue is going to be tar and cement. And then rubber is going to be tires to make rubber. We have then our paper rolls, wood chips and pallets to get paper rolls, wood chips and pallets to get carton rolls, and wood chips and pallets to get toilet paper. I don't want that toilet paper. Bring me my Charmin. We have then pallets and plywood production. So we have wood chips and glue to get plywood. And we have Wood beams, long planks, and glue to get pallets. The trailer park is a very interesting setup here. So we can bring it shingles, prefab walls, staircase railings, floor tiles, furniture, plywood. And we're going to get trash cans as an output. Okay, or we can bring bathtubs and we get somehow junk cars. We can bring corn and get junk cars. We can bring household goods and get compost or corn and get compost. It's an interesting way of getting certain things here. Septic, we are going to bring household to get slurry, corn for slurry, toilet paper for slurry, or wheat for slurry. Our wood dryer, we're going to bring planks and get dry lumber, wood beams, or long planks and again get dry lumber. New tire production, rubber, tar, metal, and empty pallets for new tires and old tires, or just regular tires. Firewood, we're going to do logs, 
get firewood. Outhouses. Well, we're going to need shingles, long planks, glue, nails, empty pallets, glue pallets, and dry lumber to get our outhouses. Or we can change these around for planks versus long planks, or dried lumber versus long planks. Metal cars. Okay, we're going to need new tires. We're going to need metal. We're going to need rubber. We're going to need fabric. And we're going to need wheels. And we're going to get ourselves a brand new black car. You can have any color you want as long as it's black. The bakery, we're going to bring flour and empty pallets to get bread or cake. Our normal recipe for cakes plus empty pallets to get cakes. Carpentry, pretty straightforward. We have trees to give us furniture and sawdust. We can also produce planks, or sorry, shingles from planks, and we get sawdust. Prefab walls, well, we're gonna need planks, we're gonna need plywood, we're gonna need beams, we're gonna need long planks, we're gonna need glue pallets, and we're gonna need nails to get our prefab walls and sawdust. Staircase railings, we're gonna need our wooden beams. Four tiles, we're gonna need our planks. Bathtubs, we're gonna need long planks and metal. Furniture, we're gonna need wood beams and we're gonna get furniture and sawdust. Floor tiles, we're gonna need dry lumber and we're gonna get sawdust. And we're gonna make shingles out of our dry lumber as well. Our cereal factory is our normal cereal recipe plus empty pallets. Then we have our butter, cheese, and chocolate. Again, normal recipe plus empty pallets. Our oil mill, we have normal bottled sunflower and canola oil, or we could do oil, corn oil barrels with corn, empty drum barrels, and pallets. We have our spinnery where we're gonna to need to bring pallets in order to get our fabric output. We have our grain mill for wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, corn, canola, sunflower flour, and soybean flour. And all of these are going to also require empty pallets and paper rolls. I guess that's for the label or maybe the box. Then we have our wood beam. So we have our wood. We're gonna make wood beams and sawdust, our wood chips at the old sawmill. Then at the new sawmill, we're gonna bring wood and diesel and we're gonna be able to get planks, wood beams, and long planks out of that, as well as bark, sawdust, junk tank, junk dozer as well. So quite the interesting set of productions. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and spawn in a whole bunch of productions so that as we go around to these various industries, we'll be able to see what the outputs look like. Let's circle back to the precision farming soil map because we didn't show that off earlier. This map is making use of the generic soil map and you can see it here applied to these fields. This map does not have a ton of fields and the fair majority of those fields are over here on the Eastern side of the map. So you can see down Southeast, we've got a fair bit of silty clay and loam, and then more toward the middle of the map, we have some loamy sand and sandy loam on those fields. Let's get a little bit of altitude, and you can see the field that we start out by owning right there. We train, we have a nice little waterfall. Lots of trees. So this map is predominantly a forestry type map uh, with a little bit of farming and a whole, whole heap ton of production. And as I said, I don't think we're going to do a necessarily a drive around. We're just going to kind of hit on all the productions as we fly around to all of the various areas. So right here, we have our starting area, for lack of a better term. We have a nice deco 
business right next to that. Then our first production, which we're going to take a look at, is located right kind of across the street from where we start out at. And it is the tar and glue production. This does not output any pallets. It outputs a bulk fill type and you're gonna to need to use a trailer or a tanker in order to haul this. So we have our dump point, interactive icon, and our fill point. Scattered around, you're gonna find little houses like this with little dump points. And these are kind of residential buy points. So here we have residential sale, right? We have another residential sale. We have another residential sale. So they are all over the place. So if you see a, just a general residence, a house, and then a, a little shed, that is gonna be a basically a residential sale sell point. Up here by the waterfall, we have a little nod to the Mothman deal. You can read about that on your own if you go and download this map. And then it looked like he's got a uh, spotlight set up to kind of shine water on the waterfall at night, which is pretty, pretty cool idea. We make our way back into the woods here in the extreme northeast corner of the map. We have one of our productions. And this is going to be the wash plant for our gold. You see we produce pallets of gold here. And we can then further refine this at the smelter for gold bars. So we have a pallet spawn point. We have an interactive icon in our dump point for our gold wash plant. So through the woods, we have our little town area where we have our spinnery. We have our pallets of fabric. We have our vehicle dealer and our bowling alley cell point. So here we have the, this is a cell point at the vehicle dealer. We have our dealer trigger here. And even though we're not gonna drive around, let's go ahead and buy our Mahindra. We'll see where our vehicles spawn. Very large area for them to spawn in at. Fairly easy to get out of the dealer as well. We have our maintenance dealer trigger located right there. Then also around the back, we also have another fill point. We have our bakery for our bread pallets, standard FS22 bakery. Continue to make our way down the extreme eastern edge of the map. We have a grain cell point located right here, east grain and bulk. Further down, we have our grocery cell point. Looping back around a little bit, we have one of our residential sale areas. We have a bale sell point, and then we have our animal dealer. You can see from the PDA, we're over here by field 22 and 23. Here we have a train transfer silo. 
transfer product to and from the train because we do have some train cell points. We have a rent train trigger there. And then we have this large facility. And initially I didn't really know what this was. But this is the spawn point, quite large spawn point for the large sawmill complex. So we have our dump point for our logs. We have our wood cell trigger. We have our interactive icon. And then over here we have our wood chip fill point. Then we have these massive areas for our pallets to spawn in. So you can do some massive scale sawmill productions at this sawmill. This is kind of the newer sawmill. Here we have our smelter. And our smelter, we're gonna be able to make our nails, our empty barrels, our metal rolls. Here we have our gold bars. Our wheels, our fancy car wheels, rims, then our pipe. So we have our dump point and our interactive point here at our melter. And then here we are back where we started. Okay. We're just going to loop back around real fast because we skipped our waste production point located right here. So this is going to be our septic production. Remember, we also then have our wood dryer. Here we have our sawmill. Here we have our transfer silo. So our septic production, our wood dryer, and our dried lumber, nicely wrapped to keep it out of the wet. We have a series of, series of field circles. As the description said, lots of these fields are not helper friendly. Here we have our pallet and plywood factory. So we have our spawn point there. We have our interactive point and then we have our dump point. And we have a barge cell point. Completely named barge cell point. We have our oil factory, and conveniently we have our large drums of corn oil spawned in over here. Here we have our palletizing factory, and we have palletized cement. Another residential sale. Here we have our tire factory. So we have our dump point, we have our interactive point, and we have pallets of new tires. This is gonna be our cement and asphalt production. So we have our fill point for cement and asphalt. We have our interactive point and our dump point. Now yeah, make our way down the southern side of the map. We kind of get a little bit of luck across at all the forestry and things. Now here we're coming up to, this is our grape processing facility. No, oh, sorry, charcoal. They've just used the grape processing building. So it says lizard charcoal on those pallets. 
again, we know where that trigger is because it is that building for grapes. And then between field 13 and this large open area, we have our chicken coop. First animal area we're going to look at. Standard base game animals, right? So we have our buy in points. We have our food trough. 500 total here. Again, we have our little chicks, ducks, roosters, and chickens. We have our sheep area over here. Again, it's standard base game animal area. Set up for 300, though. And we have lambs, young rams, rams, young goats, and regular goats. Up the way, we have then a grain cell point. Just beside that, we have our trailer park. And remember, the trailer park produces all types of weird and interesting products. So we have our dump point, we have our interactive point. And around the back, what we have is some trash cans. So we have trash cans here. Here we have a junk car. Okay, so junk cars are going to spawn there. Trash cans are going to spawn over here. Then this is a fill point for any liquids that this facility is going to produce. And then at the entryway to our trailer park we have our outhouse facility now i think the outhouse facility is bugged because it's not spawning any outhouses so we have an interactive point we have our dump point and looking at the markers i would expect to see outhouses here I don't know where they are. They're just not showing up. Continuing to make our way down the southern side of the map. We're coming around to our new vehicle production. Like I said, you can buy any car as long as it is black. Here we have our spawn point for our new cars. The other side of the facility, we have our dump point and interactive point. The extreme southwest portion of the map, we have another series of productions. We have the quarry production. So here we have some dump points up here at the top. We have a fill point down here for bulk products. We have our interactive icon. We have another dump point over here at the bottom. Then we have another fill point over here for bulk products. And then if we make our way up this windy road, we're gonna come over here to the stone quarry where we have a ton of stone that has been spawned in here. And then we have a fill pipe where we can basically get bulk stone out of here if we don't want to scoop it. But we have a ton of stone piled up here that we're gonna be able to scoop if we used a bucket for quite a long time. Here we have our paper factory. Doubling back real quick. We have another train silo. Dump and fill point for the train. 
And then our trailer dump and fill point. Up on this upper plateau, we have quite the forestry area. You can see the lowland agriculture. And we do have one production deep within the forest. Something we haven't looked at quite yet is the build mode. So here we have the firewood production. So we get pallets of firewood. We have our dump point for our logs. The wood cell trigger. Our interactive icon here at the chainsaw. Now, right under this bridge on the train track, we just have a random cell point. A train a cell point, just right here in the middle of nowhere. So that's what that hotspot is. Here we have our carpentry with the various spawn points for our furniture, prefab walls, our floor tiles, our bathtubs, cedar shingles, and railings. Making our way now around to the northwestern side of the map. We have our cereal factory. Fairly standard there. Another residential cell. Over here we have flour. So we have our dump point, interactive point, and pallet spawn point. By the pond or lake. Here we have our crude oil production. So we have our dump point, our interactive point, and it's not marked, but it does appear that we have a trigger right here, or we might be able to come over here to get our output from our crude oil production. Hidden behind the trees, right by our flour mill, we have our dairy. And then tucked in behind that, we have our pig pen. Base game pig pen. We have our slurry point. We have our food point and our animal buy point. 250 pigs have been set up for here. And we have a diner cell point. As well as our fuel point. We have another residential sale along this road. And then back in the woods, we have our cow pasture. Right, the skin, standard base game, cow area. So we know where all the triggers are. 250 cows in here. We have a manure heap here as well. And then this is the old sawmill. All right, so there are two different sawmills. We have our wood chips. We have our interactive point. We have our log drop off and our log cell trigger. And then we have our 
pallet spawn point for the old sawmill. The old sawmill only makes wood beams and wood chips. Then this is a feed production. So we have our dump point, we have our interactive point, and our fill point for our feed production. That's gonna make silage, compost, TMR, pig food, and mineral feed. Then we have another one of those residential sales. And that is, well, that is pretty much it, folks, as far as the sell points, production points, and various things. Let's go and just check build mode and see if any of this cool stuff is also placeable. So we do have a log cell point here that is placeable. It's tied to the map. We have a buying station that we can put down. And then we have our, well, you know, if we, we want to sleep somewhere else, we can get our sleep chair trigger. As far as custom productions, that is placeable. We do have the ability to place down our charcoal, crude oil, our paper and cardboard, gold production, smelter, wood dryer, pallet and plywood production, firewood production, root crop processing so that's going to be able to make uh, various soups and preserves from those new crops we have our BGA a placeable biogas plant oil mill cereal factory or dairy spinnery and a bakery we have a sell all sell point that we can put down as well, as well as our own custom residential sales. There are custom animal pins that we can put down. It's tied to the map. Ground textures, fairly standard ground textures. A lot of nice ground textures, but fairly standard looking ground textures. And then let's talk about our animal food requirements. So given the fact that we do have additional crops, they have been melded in with our animal food. So for our cows, we can feed them TMR, silage, sugar we cut, and lettuce for our 100% hay or alfalfa hay, alfalfa, grass, corn straw, or soybean straw for the grass requirement. And then for the a new requirement is protein for our cows and sunflowers, corn, and black bean. Our sheep, it's gonna be TMR, hay, alfalfa, hay, or silage for the hay category and grass, alfalfa, corn straw, or soybean straw for the grass category of our sheep. Pigs, corn, sorghum, silage, total mixed rations, or pig food. For our base food, grain, wheat, barley, oat, or pig food. Root crops, fairly standard, except we do also have lettuce and tomato added there as well. Then protein, we have black bean, corn straw, or soybean straw added to our protein column for our pigs. We have hay, TMR, alfalfa, hay, or silage for our horses, A category. Grass, alfalfa, corn straw, or soybean straw for grass. Our base food is going to be oats, sorghum, corn, or strawberries for our horses. Then our root crops are carrots, parsnips, and red beets. And then our chickens are going to be able to take wheat, barley, corn, sorghum, sunflowers, potatoes, lettuce, tomatoes, sugar cut, TMR, silage, or strawberries as our food. So quite the interesting listing of various new food items for these animals here on Mason County. So with respect to our scoring, a little kind of 
different kind of format for our video today. We're giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We're going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell pretty much anything and everything from base game, premium expansion, platinum expansion, and all the custom stuff. Can the farms be customized? We're going to fall back to our wilderness map standard that if no farm actually exists, then we're going to give the map a full point because you can fully customize a farm that doesn't exist. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique because these buildings are basically base game buildings that have just been reworked a little bit and had a new signage added to them. Maybe changed up the exterior texture colors. And then with respect to player interactive areas and triggers being clearly marked, we're going to take off a half a point because we do have a few areas that I do wish were a little bit more clearly marked. We've got the, the outhouse area that's either broken or I have no idea where those outhouses are spawning at. The crude oil facility, we don't have a clear indicator as to where the fill point is for that as well. So that's going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. Now, I would love to know what you all think of this map, this interesting merger of farming, production, and forestry, leaning heavy on production and heavy on the forestry and the custom production that is built into this map. What do you all think of that? Some of the recipes are pretty strange and rather exotic to my taste, but how are they with respect to your tastes? Let me know down in the comments below. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, pound the like button because you know what, you've been here this whole time, you clearly, clearly must like the video or you just like abusing yourself if you didn't like the video up until this point. And until next time, happy farming.